Hey everybody, welcome to the 29th episode of Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets. For those of you that are joining us back, I want to say welcome back. And for those of you joining us for the first time, I want to say welcome. And in case you're wondering what the heck is Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets anyway, it is all about answering this one big question. How do we lose weight while still feeling great without cheating by taking dangerous supplements, drugs, or undergoing surgeries that could really hurt us? And how do we sort through all of the confusing information out there when it comes to eating and exercising for fat loss? So that's the big question. This Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets has your answers. If you're out there right now and you are stuck, say you're here and you wanna go here with your body, but you don't know how to do it, or maybe you know how to do it, but you, for whatever the reason you can't get there, come here to ask your questions. We answer any and all questions about exercise, about diet and nutrition, and or about your mind, okay? Now, today, clearly we have a very, very special guest, my beautiful wife, and personal trainer, and health coach, and certified metabolic typing advisor, Kelly. And so I'm super happy to have her sitting here next to me today. She will be helping out as we go through today's episode. She will be sharing some insight. And then, um, as many of you know, we are simulcasting. We have two different cameras going over here on this side. We have a camera for our Altman Fitness public facing crowd. And over here, we have a separate camera that's for our members only. And the format is we do 15 minutes for um, for the public and then we do an additional 50 minutes where we say goodbye to you are here and we say do another 50 minutes for just members only and Kelly's gonna be doing a very special thing today for just uh, you members so be ready for that it's gonna be uh, really cool uh, now if you remember last week in episode number 28 I started sharing with you seven things that are blocking you or preventing you from achieving weight loss and if you missed that episode, go back and check it out. There's, uh, there are seven total things. Today we're doing part two. Uh, but last week we talked about the first three. Those first three, the first one was about your mind, your mindset. The second one was all about fear. And the third one was about your excuses. Now, again, if you missed it, go back and catch up on what those were because those are really important things. But today we're gonna pick up where we left off. Um, and number four is your commitment. Your commitment is, the, is an, another thing that could be blocking you or preventing you from you going from where it is you are to where it is you wanna go. So imagine this, uh, up here is where you wanna go, down here is where you are, right? And in between is the gap between those two. Now your commitment from going to here to there is the thing that's gonna continually get you to go there. So I want you to think about this, you guys. Uh, one of the things you know you need to do every week is to exercise, correct? Now, when it comes to exercise, the thing that's more important than any other thing, believe me, is consistently exercising, okay? So it's your commitment to consistently exercise. Now, any fool can go out and have a great workout once every now and then, but someone that's committed to doing three workouts, as an example, every week, say Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon is your time you're gonna exercise, that every single week you're committed to that, every single week that you do that, then you're gonna close this gap. You are gonna go from where you are to where you wanna go because you're committed to doing that. One of the things I want you to think about is if you make these appointments for yourself so that you don't back out, I want you to view it like you would a meeting at work. Now, a meeting at work, you're not gonna skip out on. The other thing you can think about is what if you if this was a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment? You're not skipping out on it. You, for whatever reason, most people will make those appointments stand out or be more important, but there's nothing more important than your exercise appointments for yourself, that you're committed to yourself, for yourself uh, to do that. And if you stay committed to getting to your workouts step by step by step by step by step, by step you will get to where you want to go, all right? So that's number four, that's commitment. Next, I'm gonna pass it over to Kelly, and she's gonna talk to you about the fifth thing that can block you or prevent you from going toward your goal. All right, so the fifth thing, you guys had to know that this was coming up, is your diet. 
right? Because really, truly, when it comes down to losing weight, your diet is probably the number one key um, for weight loss, right? And, and for health as well. Um, because what we eat can either kind of be our medicine or it can be our poison. So when we're talking about weight loss and we're talking about your diet is the very first thing to do is to focus on whole foods. Focus on those foods that probably don't have a label. Um, they have one ingredient. It's just simple whole foods. And those would be, you know, your protein sources, um, your chicken, your turkey, your fish, your <coughs> Beef, things like that, and also your um, whole, you know, whole carbohydrates, which could be things just one ingredient, right? Brown rice, potatoes, things like that, and seeds, nuts, fruits, vegetables, the very, very most important. The number one thing to do when you're changing your diet is to start ditching all the processed foods, right? All of those things that come in a box or um, sometimes come in a can that have lots and lots of ingredients that are loaded with sodium and all sorts of nasty fillers, things like that. And to realize where those processed foods may be sneaking into your diet. Um, I know a lot of people, we get a lot of clients that say, oh, well, I eat gluten-free, but they're still eating a lot of um, chips and crackers and breads and pasta, things like that, that, that um, may be really processed foods and not in their wholest forms. And definitely avoiding anything with high fructose corn syrup and really being careful on those sugars, realizing that if you're even having you know um, tons and tons of, of fruit per day that that could add up to be a lot of sugar as well so really focusing on those vegetables and proteins and really really good sources um, another little thing with diet that I just want to mention because I think that this is huge for people is that realizing that when it comes to diet if you're looking for weight loss is it's number one to tune into your hunger is you can overeat healthy foods. And if your body doesn't need fuel, if it is not hungry and it doesn't need fuel, you don't need to be eating extra carrots and extra nuts and extra um, chicken and all of those things, right? Those are really great healthy foods. But if you're not hungry, it's gonna stall your <laughs> weight loss if you're eating just to eat. If you don't need fuel, don't eat. Perfect. There you go. Cool. All right, you guys, moving on to number six, the sixth thing that can prevent you or block you from losing weight or getting to your weight loss goals. And this one is patience. All right, you guys, on this one, I want you to remember this, that it, take, it took time for you to gain the weight that's on your body today that you don't want there anymore. And it also takes time for weight to come off. And it's too easy to get caught up in, you know, of course you want the weight to be off yesterday, we all know that, but the reality is that it takes some time for it to come off. And if you start to feel that your patience is waning, like you're just can't, you feel like you can't wait anymore, I want you to think back to the reason, uh, you know, what you're doing, what is your goal, what is your big goal, because that will uh, give you a, you know, back, it will re-energize you for what it is you're actually up to here, and then think about why it is um, what you're doing there to, so that can energize you to keep moving forward toward your weight loss goal. The other thing there is, um, is to make sure to not make your goal uh, too big, right? So if you, uh, if you do have 100 pounds to lose and you're trying to lose that over the next uh, month, it's, it's not gonna happen and you're gonna feel really discouraged, you're gonna feel uh, sad, but if you, instead if you um, shrink that goal down to the longest, like a 90 day goal, and then preferably even make that a smaller chunk, like literally this week, what, what, are you, what is your goal? Is it to lose a pound or two or three? Uh, something like that is reasonable and it's attainable, and then what happens when you hit these little uh, attainable uh, short goals that get you to the bigger one, it, it breeds confidence in you. So as soon as you start feeling um, that you're achieving something like magic, you will feel the confidence bubble up inside you and that will give you the confidence to keep going, okay? So that's that one, but be patient, stick to it like we talked about with the commitment, eat the things that she talked about, and now we're on to the seventh thing. 
All right, you guys. So the seventh key to um, to getting what you want, right, and the body that you want is your support. So this is huge. It's huge. And when you were talking about the support, like in the gym and with your workouts, it's just so true that when you work out at home and by yourself, you just might not push yourself. It takes a very, very special person to be able to push themselves just as hard on their own when they're working out in their basement or wherever, or just in a, in a gym on machines uh, than they would if they kind of came into like a um, small group training session like what we do here at Altman Fitness or if you've got a trainer, somebody that you're being accountable to because sometimes we just get comfortable. It's just the way that we are, right? That, um, as people is that you just really need that support. So it's support coming from others that have similar goals as you aligning yourself with people that want the same things for themselves as you do when it comes to your you know your fitness um, so whether that's joining you know a small group training thing hiring a personal trainer hiring a coach to help keep you accountable those things are huge we need the support nobody can um, actually I don't want to say nobody but but it's very very rare that people can just go it alone and decide to make a change and not tell anybody and then be successful so other people can give us different ideas and they can push us to, to do better, to do more, to push a little bit harder when sometimes our brain is telling us to just stay small and, and stay comfortable and not go to that next level. So definitely your support. We're all Love about it. support. Love it. And on, on that note, you guys, you know, we, the Olympics just happened and 100% of every single athlete out there, to Kelly's point, all had a support team. They all had their coaches. Many of them hire sports psychologists. So they have their mind right. They oftentimes have family or friends or other people in, the, in their environments to help keep pushing them along. It's, it's a key component to any peak performer, regardless of if it's a business, uh, weight loss, athletic goal, whatever, having that support. Yep. I have one more um, bonus tip for you guys that I wanted to give along here as part of our seven things that might be blocking you from going from where it is you are to where it is you want to go. And the bonus tip is this, when it comes to the eating that Kelly mentioned, is a lot of times people will come in here and they'll say, hey Jay, I'm eating really healthy. And I say, well, are you drinking enough water? Yeah, I'm drinking enough water and so on. And I say, all right, I want you to do this. I want you to do something for me for a minimum of three days and preferably for seven days. And that minimum th or that thing is, is to track, to actually track it. Because what, what do we find most of the time over 90% of the time, what people think they're doing and what they're actually doing are two different things. Because they might know what to do, and that's more often the case, they know what to do, but then what they're actually doing and what they think they're actually doing are two different things. So you can use a, there's a, a one of the um, apps we often recommend is MyFitnessPal. And there's, I know there's a couple other ones out there that people, but like MyFitnessPal is a great one. There's other ones that work just as well, but track your water, track what you're eating so you can see your macronutrients. That's the amounts of your fats, proteins, and carbohydrates that you're eating every day. And then the other part of that is track your total calories because they, they matter. So like you, your percentages of macros and your total calories, see what those are, and then also track your water. Are you actually drinking half of your body weight in ounces every single day? Track it for at least three days, preferably seven, and just see what it says. Be as honest as possible because only your honest input gives you the honest um, uh, you know, result there, like the honest the answer about what it is you're really doing. So just, you don't even have to share it with anybody, just know it for yourself. Then if you wanna share it after that, then you of course can, and then you can use that um, uh, with your coach or with one of us as your coaches to help guide you as to how to um, improve, maybe improve your macros, or to, uh, we have little tricks for how we get people to drink more water and stuff like that. So. That's that one. All right, cool. So that's the wrap for that. Uh, one other thing I want to point out, we, I'm going to put um, just above this, these videos, I'll put a couple of resources for you guys when it comes to the diet side, because I know that's the part that a lot of people really get stuck on. Like, Jay, like, what, you know, what do I eat? What do I actually do? When do I eat? And so on. So I'm going to give you a couple of resources. One is for a program that we do here called Fit and 30. And so just above this video, you'll see a link. Um, for how to access the Fit and 30. It's not free, it's, it's a paid program, but it's really awesome. It has a whole bunch of recipes done for you, along with, uh, and, and, and the other part of that, actually it lists out all your macros for you, so it'll tell you the amounts of 
fats, proteins, and carbohydrates in every single recipe, and it's filled with a whole bunch more stuff. All the snacks, when to eat, what to eat, everything like that, grocery store list, you'll love it. So check that out, that might be interesting for you. The other thing that you might be interested in is we have a custom diet solution, a diet that's made specifically for you. So maybe you've tried uh, paleo, or maybe you've tried eating keto, or maybe you've tried Atkins, or maybe you've tried, you know, who knows, there's lots of, there's literally thousands of options out there that you may have tried when it comes to eating, but there's only one real um, way to eat for you, which is a custom diet made for you, and there's a, there's a way to figure out what that is, and it's called metabolic typing, and I'll put a link to that too. It's also, it's not free, but it is well worth it. You're going to be blown away by what you'll learn about yourself uh, to check out Metabike Typing. Again, you can find the link to that. It'll be just above this video um, in about 40 minutes after we get done recording here. Now, uh, then the next thing I want to do is uh, this weekend we have something really exciting going on that uh, Kelly is leading. And uh, can you tell them what it is? Yeah, so um, some of our members have already heard of this, and if you are on our Altman Fitness newsletter, you've been getting some emails about this, which is really exciting. If you're not part of our newsletter, you can sign up on our website, and we send out lots and lots of information. But this is really exciting because I am holding a goal-setting workshop on Sunday, March 11th, right here at Altman Fitness. Uh, so it is for people that are local, and um, it's going to be live. However, I have had a lot of people that have been coming in and, uh, and asking about it. So just showing interest and maybe just shooting us a quick message on here if it's something that you'd be interested in seeing a webinar about. But it's going to be all about how to set goals and actually um, five strategies to achieve those goals once and for our all. Because right now what it's March and maybe some of you remember what your New Year's resolutions are well, let, me, let me ask you a question on that actually okay. so when it comes to like so for you know again most of us set New Year's resolutions at the beginning of right. January right and statistically I know that 95% of those are uh, by the middle of February have already given up so uh, when it comes to um, setting the same the exact same New Year's resolution every year how many times on average does a person set the exact same New Year's resolution or you just call it goal? Yeah. So this is, this is actually in the workshop because I did some research on this. And um, the fact of the matter is, is that most people kind of on average set it for 10 years. Like 10 years, you know, somebody, you, and that might resonate with you. You might say, oh my gosh, every single December, my New Year's resolution is to exercise and eat better. And I do it for just a little while, but then I fall off, and then by the holidays, and, and even probably by spring break, or, or right about now, they feel like they have failed. And a lot of people feel like they're either setting the same New Year's resolution, or they're saying next month I'll be better, or I'll start on Monday. There's a lot of that, I'll start on Monday mentality, and then they realize why every single Sunday they're saying that, they start to go, oh my gosh. So right. if you said how many people, yeah, what on average, how many people say we'll start on Monday? How many times do they say that in a year? Or just 52, ask yourself right now. Maybe 52. Or, <laughs> in terms of if you, if you did set a New Year's resolution, are you, are you sticking to that still? Or is it already like something that's like kind of peaked as a idea and then is now kind of faded away and you already feel like a failure? Well, if that's you, get on board. By the way, how much does this thing cost? Oh, it's free. Free, perfect. Yep, totally free. free. So, cool. let me ask you one more question before we say goodbye to our Altman Fitness crowd here. Um, so, let me ask you this: What is the number one st a mistake? The number one mistake people make when it comes to setting goals. So, I think Jay touched on this before. I mean, I really think that when a lot of people um, set goals, they actually set goals that are just too big without a plan to achieve them, without cutting it down to something smaller so they can actually do it, right? I mean, we've, we've probably all been there where it feels really exciting to do something really drastic, to say, I'm gonna make a goal to, you know, lose 40 pounds this month or something, you know, in a, in a month. And, or they say, I'm gonna quit sugar and caffeine and gluten and dairy and everything, like all at once. And right. so I think that a lot of times it's about setting smaller goals so that they are actually able to be achieved. Yeah. So that's, I think, the number one mistake. 
And we have Perfect. a question on our on our live from. Oh, it's a question Should here. We answer it um, right away. One question I've been wanting to ask. Let me just see. It's about the keto. So oh, about keto diet. Yeah. Should we talk about so keto So I, I talked all about second. keto diet uh, before, but if you want to touch on, so like, I, cause I'm forgetting which episode, but it's one of the early ones. I think it's maybe episode two or three. You can go back and look at if you just search in our page. Facebook Live two or three, I'll go back and I went deep dive in keto. Okay. Do you want to touch on it quickly? I, yeah, because I, I do. Thanks so much for the question, Anna. That's awesome. Um, because it is a really, really good question. And I get that question a lot um, from some of my clients that I do health coaching with because we dive very individually into people's diets. And I would say um, there are there are pluses and minuses and it is very individual. It's individual to, to you. Um, and one thing that is a huge plus about the keto diet that I absolutely love is it gets people off of sugar. And I think any diet that can get people off of sugar and make them really aware and conscious of getting their body less um, dependent on and, and less reactive to sugar is amazing. Um, however, I think that sometimes people can go overboard in what keto might mean. And I think that sometimes um, it can end up that people are just kind of taking in a little bit too much just because it's keto they might focus on or just because they're focusing on high fat foods they might be lacking some of the nutrition they might be eating too much cheese or too much oil and not focusing on some of the building blocks of you know what we need in our body like those vegetables so if it's really um, based on vegetables and very healthy that's that's an amazing thing to uh, to focus on. The other thing that is probably the biggest thing for me when it comes to diet and nutrition is knowing if this works for you. When Jay mentioned metabolic typing, every single person is different, and one person's reaction to a ketogenic diet is going to be very different than another person's uh, reaction to. It can a literally make one person diet. sick. It can make another person feel amazing. And a third person would be like right in the middle. Yes. With it. You may have had this experience yourself. If you've tried a certain kind of a diet before, maybe uh, like you maybe you went on a fat free diet back in the eighties or something like that. <laughs> or maybe you're doing it now. And, I did, um, and it made me feel terrible. But it's, some people feel amazing with that. Yeah, and uh, and some other people, people do feel terrible with that like yeah. you did and like and I did too but uh, and other people when they try keto or something in that direction paleo or keto that might make them feel terrible but it also might make you feel wonderful right. and there might be somewhere in between those two that might be just right for you that's metabolic typing is the custom solution there um, I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to say one one yeah. more thing about the keto diet which is a number one mistake that I see people make when they choose to eat uh, keto so if you're not familiar keto essentially is eating Proteins and fats, primarily, and no carbohydrates. So, be proteins, fats. Very little protein, actually. Like not, not but, much but protein. The diet is mostly mainly. Fat. I mean, you're mostly putting in fat into your diet. Now, the thing is, if you put fat into your diet and say you uh, screw up by putting sugars at all into your body, that is the fast pass to storing body fat. Yeah. Okay. So, if you're gonna try keto, be all in on it. Right. Don't think you can do keto and still have chips or still have. Yeah. Uh, breads or pastas or any uh, any other carbohydrate like that because again if you have if you uh, have that high fat into your diet it can that can stabilize blood sugar pretty good but if you put in um, anything that sugar it turns to sugar or yeah. even a glass of wine for that matter it's gonna spike your blood sugar really fast and you have all these fats sitting there then the body stores them away so I wanted to caution you that's the number one mistake people make and it can really screw you up if you're trying to eat keto and you want to have some alcohol or eat keto and you want to still have the occasional uh, you know, chips or other carbohydrate thing into your diet, even the healthiest ones, sweet potatoes, brown rice, quinoa, yeah. or whatever, you know, all the healthiest things you might know about. Yeah. Um, and, and in my opinion, you know, if, if keto works for you because it makes you feel amazing and it doesn't lead you to be on for four or five days and then when you're off you feel like you just missed so many other things or you want to feel you know a different way then it leads you to go completely other way you know sometimes when people are too strict on certain things then they that's where the metabolic typing will reel it yeah. in it helps you to feel amazing after every single meal that you eat it dials it in it gives you the process for how to know if if keto is right for you or if eating fat free is right for you or eating somewhere in the middle of those two is right for you and um, 
Anyway, so I think we should leave it at that okay. for now. Again, Sounds if you want to like look question. backwards, I think it's episode two or three. I did this fairly early on. I did a deep dive into all about keto because I know it's a popular diet plan going out right now. And uh, you can check it out more about it over there. Okay? All right. That's it for uh, the public facing group. Before I go, though, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in, showing up for yourselves. The, reason, uh, the fact that you're here means that you love yourself and I love you for that. And it also means you're trying to go from where it is you are to somewhere better. You believe there's something better for you. You know there's something better for you. And so you're trying to get there. So thanks for tuning in. You guys, just above this video, there's multiple resources. Several are free. And then today I'm going to be adding a couple that are not free. They're paid, but they're well worth it. You guys are still cheap. They're just under a hundred bucks. And, um, uh, for the one and I think metabolic typing is a little bit more maybe around hundred and fifty dollars something like that But you'll, you'll see it above go at least go to the websites and check them out if it seems like it's interesting to you And see if it feels like the right fit if it is check it out. You will not um, uh, uh, Regret the fact that you went and checked these out. I couldn't find the word for a second uh, But anyway, thanks so much guys remember every week at 1045 I'm live right here to answer all your questions when it comes to how to lose weight get more fit and feel great all right, so until next time, you guys, we'll see you. Bye-bye.